We're just going to zoom right. back. Well, I said some really profound stuff. The quarter was nuance. I got to say it again. So ignore me. Solve this equation for one. I think it's a couple of minutes to read the picture of what I said. Now, this quiz asked to solve this equation for R. Plug this in. Plug in your solution for R here. And then find the equation of a straight line with a given slope. Now, this is just kind of an indication of one application of algebra that could be kind of important to the future of humanity, long term future. Uh, and nobody seems to understand that we slammed uh, three quarter ton projectile into an asteroid last week. It was a big deal. Uh, been all over the news and stuff. So uh, I know you're spending all your time in math and not looking at the news uh, because math is more important. Uh, but this has kind of got you know, long term consequences. So you don't need to understand that. You don't need to be working for NASA uh, to be able to at least do a little bit of algebra. Uh, that's in some ways, in many ways, relevant to what goes on. And this is something you study in a first semester of a physics course if you have, the, have an interest in physics. Uh, you solve this equation for R, plug into here, okay? Now that's easy to do. Uh, and what this is giving you is it's giving you a very basic um, physics of what happens when that probe slams into the asteroid, okay? Little asteroid has mass little m. It's orbiting a bigger asteroid with mass big m at some distance that we actually know. Um, but I ask you to solve this for R because it's a better exercise and things that you need to be able to do. Um, and then we plug that into here and we get something else. It's not the most relevant thing we can do, but it's a good exercise in the mathematics. So uh, we solve this for R. So here it is, A equals B squared over R. I use MBD for multiply by the denominator. I'm not going like to make out a standard definition. I'm kind of emphasizing the fact that you really have to understand when you have a denominator and an equation, you multiply both sides by the denominator. If you've got more than one denominator, you multiply by every denominator, or better, by the least common denominator. It'll work if you multiply by every denominator. Uh, if you multiply by the least common denominator, your equation will probably be a little bit simpler and cause you less pain. Um, okay, so we multiply both sides of the equation by the denominator, that's R. Okay, then we're gonna have R times Z squared over R. Now, why did we do that? Well, because basically this R divides into this R and R divided by R is one. But we gotta be careful that we do this, with that we understand why that is. Okay, so I'm gonna write this expression, R V squared over R here. Well, clearly that's like R over one times V squared over R one, V squared over one. And this is the same as this because R times V squared is R times squared so it gives you the numerator r times one is r so the numerator of this expression and the denominator match the numerator and denominator of this expression well r over r is one and one v squared over one is v squared because when you divide by one it doesn't change the number and then one times z squared is v squared so now we know that we can replace r times v squared over r with v squared then we can divide both sides by A. Now, because what we did here, we could write this as R over one times A over A, which is R over one times A over A, which is R times one, which is R. So this becomes R, and we get R equals V squared over A. Then we can plug that in to this thing. When we see the R, we replace it with V squared over A. So that's it because the R was squared. We put a V squared over A there, squared. So R squared is 
the expression for r squared. Now, there's a little more to it. Here we're going to see the laws of exponents within a week, and that's kind of where we transition over into intermediate algebra. So by the laws of exponents, we get this, but I don't expect you to do this at this point. Now, what we just did, we want a line in case of possible letters, a line through five, eight with a slope of one half. Okay, you have this formula, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Okay, where x1, y1 is a point on the line, well, Here's a point of the line, that's our x1, y1. And m is the slope of the line. m is one half, we say the slope is one half. So we plug in eight for y1, five for x1, and one half m. Here it is, here's our y1, that's eight. Here's our m, that's one half. Here's our x1, that's five. Now I ask you to solve for y. Uh, I also commented that this formula here, is closely related to other formulas. Uh, you basic formula is a formula for slope, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. There's a geometric connection with that that I'll talk about. But this looks a whole lot like that, except there's this isn't a y2, this isn't an x2. Well, the slope y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 is the slope of what I call a fundamental triangle from the point x1, y1 to the point x2, y2. This would be the slope from x, y to from x1, y1 to x, y, where x, y is any point on the line. So that's worth understanding because that connects the formula for slope to this very simple connection. Okay, well, let's see how everybody did on this. Okay. Now, one thing I just commented on, make sure you show all the steps. As I said, you know, you don't want to make me nervous. Okay, I'll worry about you. Okay, uh, even though um, the, 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 the one instance where I saw steps skipped, I think it was right. If you're showing me the work, show all the steps. And that's particularly important on tests. Okay. You don't want to make me nervous when I'm grading your test. I always you know, have all kinds of implications. Okay, but, okay, so we got y minus a, one half times x minus y. Got a distributor flow. You got to multiply by that one half. One half times x minus one half times five. I really want to see you do that because you want to keep reinforcing this because you're going to be doing it with simples. So it's like we just solved. Okay. You don't want to leave anything out because it's really easy to write something down wrong. You see me do it all the time. Now one half times five is five halves. I'd rather you do fractions than decimals. But if you wanted to write that as 2.5, I'd accept it. But again, you really want to get used to working with fractional expressions because they come up all the time. Dealing with basic fractions is part of that. If you round off to decimals, even though open math is going to ask you for a lot of answers in decimal form, they don't really have a choice. It's too hard to write something that will interpret every possible way you could write the thing down, okay? Uh, they really do have a choice. It could be done, but there'd be programming errors. And but keep it free of programming errors. So they, they ask for decimals because they know if you got the right decimal, you did it right. Maybe you did it with a calculator, we could have done it in a more productive fashion. Well, fashion cause you to learn more. Okay, anyhow. The 
had a flow side. Don't skip the step, write it down. Fill the paper off. Okay. And it gets a much better result. You get y equals. Eight is the same as 16 halves. Okay. So I'll just make a little note here. Eight is the same thing as eight times two over two, because two divided by two is one. And eight times one is eight. And then we can go through all the detail. Right, the eight is eight over one. Just remind yourself you got numerator and denominator. Multiply the numerator, 16 over two. Okay, well then. Negative five over two plus 16 over two, same denominator, just add the numerators. Next. That's how you do it, showing every step. So the one step I didn't show in the equation, I just kind of wrote it out to the side away from the equations. Didn't write it in line with the equations because that, that's confusing. But just a tangential little comment here. This is why eight equals 16 over two. Now you really should probably review fractions if that is completely speaking. Uh, remember it's one of the first assignments. Okay. That's how you use the point slope form. So there's a lot more I can say about the point slope form, but you'll need to move on. I'd like to illustrate it, but I pretty much illustrated it with a picture last time. Uh, well, I can't tell you this. Picture that goes with this, and you really should start with the picture. I've got the point five, eight, to the point five, eight. What's the slope of one half look like? Well, probably just something like this. Okay. Here's a point x, y, any old point on the line. If I sketch a triangle, slides parallel to the coordinate axes, what's the run here? X minus five. Rise y minus eight. The slope. Rise over one. Now that's y minus eight over x minus five. It's written slow, slow. So you can't see it, but the slope. There it is, the slope is one half. Okay. 
if you solve that for y, you get y equals one half x plus eleven halves. That's a picture of this thing. We just do with it. Yeah. Same thing I just got. Okay. In this picture illustrates a lot about slopes and everything. You're not required to know this, but you want to maybe think about it a little bit because it gives you a picture of your equation and a picture of what you can do with your equation. Okay. Okay, now it often happens, and you'll see applications for this. I'm just going to go over the mechanics of it. Let's say we've got the equation. We'll change this number. Okay. Now, I want to graph these two equations. To graph the equations, I want to find the intersects. And I'm going to graph them on the same set of coordinate axes. I'm going to write y equals 3x minus 18 out here. And then the x intercept occurs when y is zero. And your solution is x equals six. You plug that back in. If x is six, three times six is 18. 18 minus 18 gives you zero. Okay, that's your x-intersect. So the point six, zero is on the graph. I want to make sure I've got enough room here. So I'm going to make my point six, zero here. Uh, we'll make this minus 30. It's coincidentally. That was going to. Those, the two lines I had, they were going to intersect right at this point. And that's what I want to find. But I don't want them to intersect at that point. Okay, the y intercept, and I'm doing this briefly. As we did this last week. X is zero, y is 18. Well, I missed it, but here's our line. I'm having a great morning here. Thank you, 18. So here's six and zero. And here is zero and negative eighteen. Now 
I don't want that to be a minus 30 anymore. I make it like a plus three. Okay, so I'm going to draw my straight line through these points. Okay. Now, you should understand how we get intercepts, as that was an assignment last week. If you don't review it, it's simple enough. The x intercept occurs when y is zero, the y intercept occurs when x is zero. Okay. And the intercepts of this equation, well, I'm not going to go through the details, but and have 30 there. That's what I thought it did. I want to have negative 30 there. We'll go to two. Okay. Usually, I can take that through. Okay. So, if y equals zero, that gives you the x intercept. Y is zero, you get x over five equals 15. And still ridiculous. Who? Y is zero, X over five would equal two. You multiply both sides by two, you get X equals 10. <clears throat> so Y is zero, X is 10, that gives you the point. And zero, which should be about here. If X equals zero, Y over three equals two, so Y would equal six. So, that's 18, 60 right there. We have a point zero 0.06. And I could draw a line through these two points. So this is my equation. It's a graph of my equation. Y is 3x minus 18. And this is y equals, well, y over 3 plus x over 5 equals two. Now write down what you think the coordinates of this point are based on the labeling I have here. You can see that the X coordinate of this point is somewhere between six here and 10 here, right? And the Y coordinate is somewhere between zero and six, because here's the y coordinate. It's going to be between zero and six. Okay, so just eyeball it. See what you think and write down some reasonable estimate of what the coordinates are without having to draw a picture and everything. So anyhow, good point. I, I can visually estimate here, if this is six and this is 10, what this looks to me like is about 7.37821. So seven's not a bad estimate. Of course, mine is good. Okay, so here's a line where x equals seven. Here's a line where I drew it a little high. The estimate I got, I'll say y equals two. The way I drew that three is probably a better estimate. Okay. So, let's cross at seven two. Okay, if I plug seven two back into these equations, okay, what do you get if you plug seven for x uh, for y? Uh, sorry, seven for x and two for y. I 
what I'm going to say is substitute this into each equation. So in the first equation, you would have y equals two, there's your two, and x equals seven, you'd have this, okay? So then you'd have two equals 21 minus 18. Two equals three, that's close. That's pretty good. For a hand drawn sketch, an estimate as you guys made from out there in the sketch, it wasn't all that big or that necessarily well done, okay? If you plug into this equation, you would get y over seven plus two over five. Okay, I'm sorry, you get uh, two thirds plus seven fifths, okay? Two thirds is 10 fifteenths, seven fifths is 21 fifteenths. You get 28 fifteenths. On this side, you get about 2.8. On this side, you get two, okay? I did that right in my head. It's like, I mean, that's like 1.4 and that's like 0.66. Now it's, it's much closer to two. That did something wrong. 28 over 15 is like 1.8, not 2.8. Anyhow, comes out close. It actually comes out a little over two, so I did something wrong. You write the numbers out, reconcile the fractions, and get this. Now that's what you're going to see in open math. Let's run you through this step by step. Graph the equations. I stress write these things out on paper. Okay, now there's one more thing and I don't have a whole lot of time. But since we did the exercise we started with the idea of substituting one solution in for the other, shouldn't be that difficult. Okay, so again, we have These two equations. Okay. Now, I'm going to follow the second equation for y. I'm going to multiply both sides by 15. Y15, that's the least common denominator. And I get this after some steps that you should really go through, I get 5Y plus 3X equals 30. Skipping all kinds of steps that you should be able to fill in. Okay, so I saw I could solve either equation for y. I chose to solve the second for y because that got me over the whole thing with the denominators. Okay, so I've got this. Now, what I do with this. I take this quantity, this expression, plug it in for y here. Okay, I take the solution to this equation for y. 
and plug it in for y gives me this equation, which I can easily solve. Now I'll solve it real quickly. I'm going to do five times. Yes, go through all the steps that I'm going to skip, and you don't need to skip. I get negative 15. I get sorry, negative 3x plus 150 equals 4x minus 90. Well, that's easy to solve. We're going to end up with negative 7x plus 240. And that's not even remotely right. So I did something wrong here, but the process is solve this for y, plug that in for y, you solve the equation that you get. Why did that not be cut? Because this shouldn't have been 30, this should have been six. I didn't use a distributive law there. Okay, so we got it close to the right. It should have been six. This should have been 30. Could have been negative 120, still isn't there. So something wrong, those are the steps. Okay, so don't imitate my arithmetic and imagine What's so wrong? What's five times three? Fifteen. Something's, something's been fired in my brain, but x equals negative 120 over negative 18, which equals. Two thirds. Okay. Point is, what was your estimate for X over here? It's up. Okay. When we do this, we get six and two thirds, and this is correct, I think. They have to be checked. And then you can plug in and find oh, one. So you can yeah. find the exact coordinates for those lines should have intersected. Okay. And they'll be pretty close to 7, 2, because this one worked out, and 7, 2 works out pretty close here. Better than 7, 3 would have. So your estimate is better than my picture. It's a good estimate. That's called substitution. Solve one equation for X or Y, it doesn't matter. Plug that back into the other equation and solve what you get. A little bit of work, but there's nothing there that you can't do, just using the rules, add to both sides, subtract from both sides, multiply both sides, distributive law, do it carefully. Okay, well, sorry for running over there. Sorry for making mistakes, but there we have it.